What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Dissect That Film, where we dissect your favorite films, film franchises, and TV. This week on our episode of Slice of TV, we are talking about episode 7 of Dexter, New Blood, Skin of Her Teeth. Joining me, as always, is the wonderful Angela from DNA Gaming. Welcome back, as always. Thank you. All right, so as we do every week, we're going to go through, we're going to do spoiler-free, and then... Once we're done talking about that, then we're going to jump right into spoilers. So if you haven't seen this episode yet, make sure once we get to spoilers, you get the heck out of here. Go watch episode seven and then come back and watch the rest of this review. All right. Again, I want to thank everybody who's been leaving uh, amazing comments on our prior Dexter reviews. Um, it's been great. They've been when it comes to comments, I feel those videos have been getting the most out of everything we've been doing. So thank you very much. I love all the theories and all the, the information we may have forgot to mention um, it's been a long time since I saw the original series, so there might be some things I I miss when we're discussing uh, events from those seasons. So thank you for filling in the blanks. All right, Angela, what did you think of this episode? Like I say every week, and it's going to continue every week until something dreadful happens. It was uh, it was great. Right. It was great. I mean. I, <laughs> Without spoiling, I can't say much, but it was great. Mm -hmm. Learned a lot of things. Yep. About some people. About some peoples. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. another great one. Uh, keeps you on the edge of your seat. You're seeing things go down in Dexter fashion where somebody, you're like, oh, okay, somebody's going to get it, you know, the, the right way. And then it all falls apart. And it's like, oh, well, I guess... Dexter's got to do what he's got to do, but there's a little twist at the end that is going to really shape up how the next three episodes go uh, for the show. Another great performance by Clancy Brown, uh, who plays, um, 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 why am I blanking? Kurt. Kurt. Yeah. Jeez. I talk about this show every week and I literally just watched this episode and I'm blanking on names. I'm just so excited. Um, and of course, Michael C. Hall, fantastic. Uh, I was I was kind of disappointed that Harrison wasn't really in this episode, but the the bit he was in was great, it was very emotional, yeah. and um, you get to see some, you know, you think you're gonna see something, and then it all falls apart. Like we said before, it wasn't just one thing; it was a couple things where you're you're ready for something to happen, and then boom, it ends, and you're like, oh shit, when is it actually gonna happen? If you understand what I mean, I'm trying to say all this without spoiling anything. So I might just sound like I'm just saying a lot of random words, but I don't want to spoil it for all you people who are here who haven't seen it yet. What for one? Why are you here right now? Go watch this and then come back and watch this. Go watch that and then come back and watch this as I should have said. <laughs> it's a mess. We're a mess. You're a mess. I'm a mess. I'm, I'm an fine. absolute mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, uh, great performances all around. Um, I feel this had a, this episode had a lot of emotion attached to it, um, especially with uh, what was discovered at the end of the last episode. Um, it's it's really gonna be some. It, it's gonna be a freaking roller coaster ride these last three episodes. I'm so excited, and we got to see somebody from the past again. Um, not in the same way we saw a, a prior character from the original series, but it was good to see him again. And it was a it wasn't like they pulled it from the original series. It was a reshot scene, which was cool. So they they brought back um, a certain character, which we'll mention when we get into spoilers. It's going to be it's going to be a good one. Oh, all right. We were we're almost five minutes into the episode, so I feel like that's pretty good for. For non-spoilers let's get into the spoilers so if you haven't seen episode seven of dexter new blood make sure to go check it out and then come back and watch the rest of this all right so we're warning you spoilers 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 all right angela what'd you think of this episode with full spoilers oh gosh everything that happens with kurt and this his backstory that he tells yeah about seeing his dad hit women and right i was like 
well, that kind of makes sense as to why you're an asshole, but, right. you know, you can stop that cycle. Uh, him always being one step ahead of them, even though they're like, oh, yeah, we he doesn't know that we know, but yet. He still knows. Dexter knows, and he's got to cover his little tracks. Mm-hmm. Definitely, <sighs> it's it, it was great when he was telling that story when they were doing the flashback, and it was, and it shows that it was Kurt. Like it didn't show like his story, what he was saying to a T. It was showing he was mm-hmm. telling a different story, but it was showing you what really happened, and it was yes. Kurt. It was Kurt, and it was kind of like the yes. origin of why of of what he does but yeah it feeds into why he probably becomes this type of person because his dad was very abusive his mom left and so he used to say he would pick up drifters um and beat the shit out of them and then just let them go um and he would pick up like prostitutes and people were like no one gave a shit Mm -hmm. like the police wouldn't care or anything so he would get away with it and Kurt was there the whole time. So he he got the, the thirst for it. I love the the uh, we got a cameo from John Lithgow, uh, who played Arthur Mitchell in the original series. We got a nice flashback to the uh, murder scene um, with Rita because Harrison is kind of talking about how he remembers, even though he did listen to the podcast that talks about the murder he remembers, even though he was uh, was a wee baby, um, he remembers everything uh, to to a, to an extent. Um, and you think like Dex, so Dexter's whole plan is he wants to tell Harrison who he is, and try, you know because Harrison is talking about how like he pretty much breaks down and tells Dexter how he feels, and that you know he's he wants to hurt people. And so Dexter is is about to come out and say what he wants to say, um, you know, tell him who he really is. And Harrison kind of blows him off and and runs away. And you're like, oh, man, it's so close. And then it all crumbles. And we get and then, of course, you get the, you know. Angela, she finds her friend Lily in the cave that was at the end of the last episode. Iris. Yep. And she uh, calls Dexter, but she wants Dexter uh, to come and look at the body and kind of determine what happens and maybe if they can find a suspect. And it's crazy. I, I love how Angela and Dexter, even though their relationship is very strained, they're, I feel Dexter's trying to make it better but she wants nothing. She just wants to figure out who killed her friend. And it's great to see old Dexter come in and analyze everything and figure things out, like finding the, uh, uh, the, how he pulls out the tooth. Like who would have thought of that? Yeah. I mean, I guess somebody as smart as him who does that type of work, but he pulls out the, the, uh, one of the teeth and inside is there's uh, skin, you know, in there because she bit her attacker before she was killed. And so they, you know, sends it in to get analyzed. And of course it all spirals out. Cause she's like, I think I know who it is before they even go to analyze this, um, DNA. And she says, Kurt, which is, you know, Dexter was kind of surprised. I think in a way that she guessed, you know, the right person because Dexter of course knows who he is. Uh, but for the fact that Angela figured it out too, it was like, oh, okay. So we're kind of on the same page. And his thing is he doesn't, he doesn't kill people to kill people. We've talked about this before. This is the, the whole thing is like Dexter. Yes. Dexter, Dexter is a serial killer. He's bad. He's, you know, he does a very bad thing, um, but he kills bad people. People get away with things like murder and abuse and stuff like that. Um, and so, he would rather the police arrest these people and put them in jail forever or, you know, this and that. But the fact that, you know, he takes care of the people who, you know, evade the system 
And so when she, when he finds out that Angela, you know, when Angela guests Kurt, he's like, okay, we'll do this the right way. We'll let the police take care of him. And I'll just be back here watching and be ready if something were to happen. And of course they arrest Kurt because they find his DNA uh, in the skin. And then we get this whole thing where, you know, he's, he's trying to, he's playing the Kurt nice guy part where he's like, Oh, you're crazy. I don't know. Like you're really going to bring me in. Like, you know, I wouldn't do this type of thing when, you know, the typical nice guy, you know, persona that Kurt has kind of put out, put out into this town through the years. Um, I love how Logan, you know, Logan, I like his, I, I like Logan because he was very uptight when Angela would always accuse Matt of something. He was always defensive, but when Kurt, you know, his DNA matches what they pull from Iris, he's very on, like he's on board. He doesn't jump to any conclusions. He's like, this can't be right type deal. No, he's, right there next to Angela bringing in Kurt. And even after everything falls apart, when Kurt tells his bullshit story and he gets set free, Kurt is, or Logan is still there. Like, why didn't you say something, you know, forever ago? Why are you just saying this now? Like, like your father's dead. What's he going to do type deal? So that's kind of Logan maybe down the road kind of being like, okay, maybe his, I feel like he thinks his story is still bullshit. And Angela, of course does too. She wants, she believes she knows it's him, even though Mm -hmm. there is a part of the episode where she's like, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was his dad type deal. So there's a lot going on um, emotionally with a lot of these characters, especially Angela, because she was um, Iris's, you know, friend and, Mm -hmm. And it's kind of sad when they do the flashback and he's Kurt, young Kurt, which I believe is played by the same actor who played Matt. They kind of dressed him up. I could be wrong. I'd have to look that up. But it looked just like Matt. They just put like a blonde wig on him. I'll have to look that up. Mm. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. If it even shows it. Maybe not. Maybe uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm just making shit up. Uh, young Kurt. No, nope, never mind. It's not the same guy. No, it's, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. It kind of it kind of resembled him. So I was like, wow, maybe they did that. Never mind. I was wrong. Don't listen to me. I don't want any comments. Like no. <laughs> uh. But yeah, it's uh, it's you know, he's asking Iris about you know, well. Because you know, she's talking about her her best friend, but now it's her ex best friend because she was too too chicken to to go along with it. It was kind of sad to see that, and then of course to see the whole how everything went down. I'm like, is there really no one else on this road? Really? I understand this is a small town, but this is also New York. New York's a busy place, like the whole state. <laughs> There's no one on this road. As his, his chick is getting just murked in the middle of the road. Okay. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, I like how Harrison and Audrey's relationship is kind of strained because of Harrison's actions at the wrestling match. Um, she's kind of guarded, even though she knows that Harrison is, he's got a lot of darkness in him because he confessed it to her that he always has the, the thought of hurting somebody, but she's still guarded by him. You know, he has to hang out with her and she's like, I'm probably just going to lay low, you know? And, you know, he gets very defensive and, and just walks away. And it's like, okay, I mean, good, good on her because I, I would kind of be the same way. If like, I saw somebody I like just snap some kid's arm after he tapped out for five straight minutes. <laughs> What'd you think of Harrison in this episode? From from what little he was mm-hmm. in it, he did a good job. I mean, as always, he's sells the emotion. Right. 
I mean, he's he's mad. I get he's mad at Audrey for bringing up the fact that, you know, you broke his arm after he tapped out. Like, yeah, why? But mm-hmm. he's he's like, no, I can't tell you why. Right. And then the the whole um, him remembering what happened to his mom, thinking that they were nightmares and they were just flashbacks. Yeah, they were they were memories of yeah. things he had seen. We start, I do like the fact that we're starting to get more of the old Dexter theme throughout the episodes because the fact that people know he's Dexter. Well, I mean, when I say people, I mean uh, Angela. And of course, Harrison knows who he really is just by name. But we get that the, the classic theme that they play at the end of the episodes during the credits. We get that a little bit more into the episode itself because it's starting to it went from um, like a just a crime thriller with, De- you know, with this character. And now it's starting to feel more like Dexter, like the old Dexter, because we're getting Dexter starting to plan plan things. And. And whew, I just love where he's like sitting in the background and he finds out Kurt's Kurt got released and he's like, well, I guess I have to kill him. <laughs> I guess I got to do it myself. And. Did you notice that the guy um, that gives Harrison the package was the guy from the hotel? Yeah. I was like, oh, he looks familiar. Yeah. So, yeah, so this truck trucker guy who was the one posing as Matt at the hotel, he gives Harrison because Harrison's working at um, Kirk Caldwell's truck stop. It's so it's a trucking stop and there's a diner, there's Coldwell Diner, and then there's cold. He's got Coldwell Caldwell Trucking. And one of his truck drivers gives Harrison a package because Harrison's working there. He's like, he's uh, his job is literally like power washing tractor trailer trucks. And he gives him a package to give to Dexter. And when Dexter gets it, he opens it and it's like a metal rod, which at first I didn't even know what it was. I was like, oh, was I wonder. It was, yeah, it's a bolt that you would use for cert, like to get things surgically um, repaired. Which at first Dexter doesn't know what it is. And the you get the you know Dexter goes to the diner to um, see Harrison on his first day of work, and Kurt sits down, and they have a nice conversation. That's when Kurt gets arrested, and all that stuff happens. And then later on, when Kurt's in the cell, and Dexter breaks into. Um, the police station. Well, he doesn't really break in. He just walks in to the police station because he gets the one guy who's working there to go <laughs> tend to some sheep that escaped. <laughs> Pretend yeah. Like, oh no, the sheep escaped from Mrs. I don't remember what her name was. <laughs> That's such a goofball. So Dexter goes in there and he pretty much threatens him. He's like, don't, you know, stay away from my son. And, you know, what the hell was, you know, tell your, tell your cronies to stop giving my son stuff and that's when Kurt you know tells him he's like remember that night you picked me up uh, for, at the tavern when I was drunk he's like and I thought it was snowing when I got home I realized it wasn't snow it was ash and so what does Kurt do he went to the place where Dexter with the trash place where they throw trash into the fire and that's where the bolt came from it was a bolt that was used uh, when Matt got into his boat accident. He had to get his hip um, repaired with some bolts. So that was one of the bolts, which is just like, oh, no. Kurt knows yep. that Dexter killed Matt. And the funny thing is, it's like, how did I guess because he came from that direction, he figured it out that Dexter killed him, that Dexter was the one who did it. Because he really oh. doesn't like say you killed my son. He just tells him, I just knew that it wasn't. I knew it wasn't snow when I got home. And then that's when Dexter casually walks out. But then he gets in his truck and he's like freaking out. He's like, he knows. He knows yeah. I did it. Yeah, because he tells him uh, titanium doesn't melt or something like yes. that. Yes. And you're like, oh, uh, what does that mean? <laughs> I said well, that. I love little, yeah. Well, I I know a little bit about medical things. 
Um, and I know titanium screws are mainly used because they last so long. But I love their little conversation that they're having at the diner where they're like picking at each other's parenting. Yep. I was like, oh. Yeah, they're oh. just taking little jabs at each other. That was that was a nice little nice little touch. I think, like, oh. And then Kurt, like your son. Yeah. And then Kurt gets arrested and he gets taken out yeah. and Dexter's just like casually finishing his piece of pie <laughs> yeah. or cake or whatever he was eating. Oh, so good. So good. But of course, Dexter and Harrison's relationship just can't get better. Like it feels like every time Dexter tries to get close, um, Harrison kind of evades him and you know Dexter is just getting to the point where he's just like I need to tell him who or what I am and that it's not you know that he's not alone in this darkness that he's in um, and Deb of course is there being trying to be the moral compass for Dexter but Dexter's like what, what, do, we, what do you want me to do like I'm doing what I can do and you know it, it's it's this is not easy it's not easy. I don't remember exactly what she says to him in the in the cabin. Uh, she talks about hit about Harrison drifting towards Kurt, right? And that he need that Dexter needs to kill Kurt, mm -hmm. and he's like, I can't. Could could you imagine uh, some something along the lines of uh, if he kill if he killed Kurt? Harrison would never know who Kurt really is. Where if yeah, the police yeah. arrest him and he gets charged with murder, Harrison will see the monster that he is and yeah. would would more come back to Dexter. So yeah, because Harrison's had too much loss. Mm -hmm. And that's when yeah. Deb is like, "Oh yeah, so that, I mean, perfect. Just uh, rely on the police." And as she walks away, the bl the bullet hole, the blood starts filling her shirt where the bullet hole went in, which I, I love that. Oh, just there was just so much in this episode to um, in, in such a short amount of time. This episode was 46 minutes. It was 12 minutes mm -hmm. shorter than the prior episode where I'm like, why? Why? Hour an episode, going. man. Come on. Give Keep me on more. Going. Um, Make it three hours. No, I'm just <clears> kidding. <laughs> uh, I liked Molly Park in this episode. I think mm -hmm. she is starting to um, I feel after Angela kind of confronted her after Kurt was arrested. She kind of um, she's becoming, I don't know, more of a, a likable character because she she she's so, you know, she's sad. She like Angela confronts her. She's like, what? You just wanted this for your podcast. You risked your life for for your podcast. And you didn't really care about what you were doing and she's like get out of here we're not partners and then she like slinks out of the room and then they meet later in the in the tavern after Kurt gets released and she's you know this is where you get the, the conversation where they're talking about how you know talking about her going to the cabin and then about how Jim showed up just in the the nick of time it was like perfect timing. And then Angela's like, well, yeah, because he was he her overheard you and Kurt talking and he followed you because he was concerned. And she's like, well, that's weird because we were at the bar and Dexter was at this table, which is pretty good distance. He's like, she's like, can you hear what those two? It was like Fred Jr. and his and his husband were, were yeah. arguing at the at the bar. Is like, can you hear what they're saying? And it's like, no. So uh, it's like, well, I, I know Kurt. Kurt's, a, you know. Kurt's creepy, but like that's just creepy on Dexter's part or on Jim's part. And so that's when yeah. things are starting to unravel and you're like, oh man. So De <laughs> it's just Dexter is in a fucking shit storm that he can't get out of. And it doesn't make it any worse, at, uh, any better when at the end of this episode, um, that trucker guy uh, grabs Dexter from behind after Harrison speeds away with his friend. And then that's where the episode ends. You're like, oh shit, because we all know where he's going. My my angry. I'm like, it's fucking over. Yeah. <laughs> no. So soon. So sad. 
Ugh. Oh man. It's just so much to digest. But I can't wait. Still got three episodes. Please make them longer. It's uh the show has been fantastic. Every episode is just like keeps me on the edge of my seat. And the fact that I asked so many questions, we asked so many questions during our show here, and oh, it just means it's a good show. You know, I, I feel invested in like every character that's in the show or in a lot of sh- other shows that you watch or even a lot of movies. You're always invested in like the main yeah. guy or maybe a side character. But like, I feel like this entire like most of the main cast here where you got Dexter Harrison, Angela, uh, Molly Park, you got Logan, even Logan, who's not even a very mainstay character. He's still a pivotal part of the show. Um, Kurt, you know, I feel Clancy Brown plays a really good, just like double sided, you know, like he's a double sided sword. He's, he can play off that nice guy persona, but he's also just a monster. Oh, we forgot to mention Dexter brings Angela to Kurt's cabin. Yep. And they discover that he emptied the entire cabin. Well, he emptied the makeshift hotel room that he had with the camera and the the one uh the door, you know, with the one handle and Of course Angela believes him. You know, Angela is not, it's not like they went to that room she's like, "Well, there's nothing here, so it must you must be wrong." Yeah. She believes it. She knows like she still believes Kurt is the killer <clears throat> even though she kind of questions it as we stated before but yep. it's uh <clears throat> whew. this is but you learn you learn what kind of what happened to iris in the beginning because they talk about he talks about her being shot from behind yes at a far distance with a rifle mm-hmm. um and that she was still alive when she was brought when, there when she yeah she was buried alive and she tried to dig herself out yeah which is just makes it more emotional because you can yeah. see the just the the heartbreak in Angela's face as, as he's explaining this and you know it, but you know I mean that's Kurt's MO that's you know we've seen it in the past in prior episodes with the other two girls um, you know he it's it's like a sport. I mean, that was more they showed that as a you know, she wants to get out. He won't let her out. So she jumps or he tries to like grab her. She bites him. That's where she gets the the DNA in her teeth. And that's where that, that scar because Angela asked about the scar during one of the during the interrogation and mm-hmm. he just he just says, oh, I work with my hands like that was his yep. reasoning, which it, it's tough. Like something like that, a small scar on your hand, like especially a man, his age, it's kind of tough to, to land somebody on that unless they could determine it was, you know, a bite mark. Yep. But if it happened 25 years prior, probably not. Uh, but you see, you know, she bites him. She jumps out. She starts running down the middle of the road and it's, you know, it's a highway. So, you know, and there's no other cars. There's literally no other cars. It's just Kurt's truck. And he screams at her and then proceeds to pull out a rifle, which has a fucking laser sight on it. <laughs> it's a yeah. it's a better gun than he uses now. And he just blasts her in the back and she um well she doesn't clearly she doesn't die because Dexter determines that she was still alive when she was brought to the yeah. cave. Which was the reasoning I'm we're, we're going all over the place. So if people are like, oh, why are you going from the end to the middle to the beginning? It's because this is how my brain works and I apologize. Dexter, I'm trying to think. Oh, so Angela determines that the reason Kurt called off the search for Matt was because their next part, their next section they were going to search was the cave that Iris was found and he didn't want her to be found. So he just made up his bullshit about Matt being alive, even though I think he knew Matt was dead the whole time. And I think that's why he goes well, no, because th- he was drunk before that. Um, but even after that, like he knew that, you know, Matt, Matt's yeah. dead. Yeah. A lot to digest. The ending definitely gets me intrigued because I know if I, I have a strong feeling that we're going to be like, it's going to be Dexter waking up and he's going to be face to face with Kurt in a not so good situation. Um, 
probably locked in a room that he can't get out of with his new, with a new mate, you know, a new setup. And now we know he is an accomplice. Like that dude is probably helps him find these girls. Um, well, Dexter finds a, that check for $5,000 and it's it got his name on it. Yeah. It's uh, Elric Kane. Cause yep. he's like, who the hell is that? Mm-hmm. And what does, what does, uh, Kurt owe him for? Right. So. Yep. It's to do nefarious deeds. <laughs> oh boy. To do that. Yep. So that's, that's about it. If we missed anything, make sure to leave us a comment uh, down below. If uh, there's anything you all, anybody wants to add, make sure you leave a comment. Do you have anything to add before we leave? Before we get out of here? No, I just want it to be Monday or Tuesday again so I can <laughs> watch the next episode. <laughs> right? All right. Well, that's where we're going to end this episode of Slice of TV. I hope you all enjoyed. Make sure to check out Dexter uh, New Blood on Showtime every Sunday at... 9 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and this show goes live every Wednesday. Well, this uh, episode will drops every Wednesday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Until next time, I am Brett Parker. That is Angela from DNA Gaming over there. And this is Slice of TV. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Goodbye.